Hello everyone, my name is Linda Dolkey and welcome to this month's Global Stampin' Video Hop. Um, our theme this month is royalty and I wondered what I would do for this one. I had a few ideas. I knew that I wanted to work with purple because as some of you would know, purple is kind of the colour of royalty. But also we have a couple of sets, um, we've had a couple of sets in our catalogue that um, for example, there was Friendship Royalty and there was a couple of other sets. There's a princess set with a tiara and I decided to go with something that's not in the catalogue at all. So this one is actually an online exclusive and it used to have dies. The dies got retired quite a while back, but the stamp set is actually still current. So if you go looking for it in our online store, I'm in Australia and I'm pretty sure this would be the same around the world, but who knows? It's definitely available in the online store because I checked just before I started this video. So um, it is called the Queen Bee Set and it's super nice. Um, I just will, I'll put the price of it, oh actually it's $41, but I'll put the price up on the screen for you as well. It's got a few little sentiments, it's got a really great little background kind of splodgy text, which is really cool. It's got the B, the big B, a small B, and also a fabulous crown. We've also got a little flower down here. So we've got a whole bunch of different, these are really great stamps to work with because you've got lots to, that you can do in a background. And then you have got like the main elements such as the Bs. Um, and that's what I'm gonna use today. So I'm gonna start, let me just move these pieces out of the way. I'm gonna start with this um, basic white thick cardstock. I've cut a sheet of A4 cardstock in half and then I'm folding it in half again to make my card base. I'm just going to use a bone folder to fold over the edges. That's ready to go. Actually, it's got a bit of a mark there on the corner, so I'll move that out of the way and, um, and we'll get started. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is stamp my B. Um, and I've just got a piece of basic white paper here for this. Um, I am going to use Petunia Pop, which is a new colour. It's not truly... I mean, I could go really purple, but I've decided to go kind of, um, I don't know, not really purple. Can I just make a suggestion? When you're opening a new ink pad, something you will want to do is to massage the ink pad with a spoon, the back of a spoon, so that you can make sure that the ink is properly um, pushed down into the pad so it's distributed correctly. Otherwise, what can happen is you might have too much when you first buy it. Um, you might have too much ink sitting on the surface and that can give you a little bit of a um, splodgy result, which you don't always want. So I'm just gonna suggest to you, I'm just going to ink this up. And I don't know if you can see, there is a lot of ink on there. So when I stamp this, all right, let me grab us, actually, I'll just do it on this bigger piece. If I stamp it and hold it in place, like so, like I normally stamp, that's actually pretty intense and you've actually lost some detail here in the middle because it's too inky, okay? So you would massage the ink down, but if you find it's still too inky, what you can do is stamp, but don't hold it down. Just stamp and that's much better. We've got a bit more detail there. And then you could also re-stamp if you wanted to. So if I wanted to do another stamp and this time hold it in place, this one will be lighter. And then you can pick the one that you like the best. So this one is kind of much lighter. You've got these darker ones. I like the one that was stamped, this one. This one has been um, stamped, but I didn't hold it down as long. But that's really only when your ink is uh, strong at the very beginning, which when you buy new ink pads, like these ones, that might be the case. Now, what I'll be doing is I'm going to cut around my B because I don't have a die for this anymore, but it doesn't take very long to cut. When I'm cutting, I always leave, I hope you can see this, a little bit of a border between my cut line and my image. And I am going to go around and cut the whole thing. Rather than have you wait for me to do that, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> Just to speed up the process so you haven't got to worry about me uh, doing this forever and ever, okay? So that's really cool. We, we have our B ready to go. And then I'm going to use a shape now. This is the shape I've chosen to use, and my B is going to end up right here in the middle of my shape. Can you see that? But first of all, I want to have some fun with the background. So I'm actually going to use some pool party ink, and I'm going to use this text just a little bit randomly, like so. Now, another nice color for this would be Fresh Freesia, 
because I am actually going to be using some fresh freesia um, cardstock behind all of this. So this is going to go here, this is going to go here. And you can see how nice this is with that bit of text coming out from behind. Isn't that cool? I really do like that. Something else that you may find you want to do is to grab some blending brushes and some pool party ink, which we've got right here, and just give it a little bit of a splashy finish in the middle. So it gives it a little bit more oomph as well. And don't forget, we'll be putting our B here, so the middle of it will be color, uh, covered up. So don't worry if it's a bit blotchy in the middle because that, that will be color, covered anyway. So let's get that. All right, let's see how that looks. All right, so this is now looking, oh, it's looking good. A little bit of splodge with the stamp, the text, and also a bit of color extra coming out there. Looks really nice. All right. It's creating a really nice feel. Now, if you're wondering where this comes from, this particular die is from the Thoughtful Expressions dies, which are actually being retired at the end of April. Um, so the last day of April is the last day to buy those. Um, if you haven't seen them, mine are a little bit all over the place in here. This is the one that I, the biggest one here is the one that I've used for this banner. Oh, I managed to get a mark there, but that's that's okay. We'll we'll concern ourselves with that a little bit later. All right, so you can see we've got all these different banners in different sizes from quite small to the large one. And then we've got the same with this shape. I don't know what to call this shape. It's not really a circle. It's, I'm not sure. Is it an octagon? Kind of. <laughs> it does have eight sides, but the sides are wibbly wobbly. So um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting shape, but I love them and I'm really sad they're going because I think these were a really great um, set of dies. They do match a stamp set. Like for example, there's a hummingbird. You can see there's the shape of the hummingbird and there's a couple of flowers and bits and pieces in there as well. And there's some leaves and some little flowers. Super, super cool set. All right. So if you love that one, it's something you might want to grab before it retires at the end of this month. All right, I'm gonna put this here now that I've got this on here. No one's got, by the way, no one can really read these, um, these greeting, these words. They are meant to be kind of indistinct. So don't worry about trying to make them, um, you know, readable. That's, that's cool. I'm actually gonna attach this B. You can see I stamped on the back there, but that's okay. No one's gonna see that either. And we're going to use some glue dots here in the middle on the back. I'm just going to put probably two or three glue dots right there in the center. Whoop, another one, push it on. That's better. And one up near the top. And then I'm going to position that so it's centered right in the middle. Push him down. And if you want to, because he's pushed down the middle, but not on the outside, you can have his wings going up a little bit, which I always think looks good. All right. Liking how that's coming together. All right. So I'm now going to work on the base. Um, as you can see, I have my um, cardstock ready, ready to go. So the cardstock is 10 centimeters by 14.3, which is my basic card size. I'm just going to check that the paper is actually the right length before I continue. Yep, it's perfect. I should trust myself. And I'm gonna be using some new paper. Okay, so this paper is called Unbounded Beauty. And I chose it particularly because it has all of the ink colors in it. So the colors in this paper, are Berry Burst, Calypso Coral, Peach, Peach Pie, which is a new color, um, Petunia Pop, Pretty in Pink, Shy Shamrock and Summer Splash. Those are all new colors and Pretty Peacock as well. Okay, so these are the papers so i thought putting this together this would look really beautiful and give us that kind of purpley royal look which i really like this is the one i'm leaning to the other one that would look really good is this one here because it's got um it's got the pool party in it as well as a couple of the other colors and that would also look good so you could pick either of these um i think that's really beautiful as well well oh, it's a tough decision Goodness me, do I like that one or do I like that one? I may end up doing one of each <laughs> because I think, oh, I don't know. All right, you guys can let me know in the comments which one I should have used. <laughs> It'll probably be whichever one I don't use. 
I'm going to go this one today. I didn't think I would. I thought I would go with the darker one, but I'm going to cut this one because it has got that pool party in it, but it's still going to give us some of that royal purple. Does everyone know why purple is considered a royalty colour or the colour of royalty? There's actually a good historical reason behind it. Um, once upon a time, back in the many, many hundreds of years ago, um, purple was reserved for royalty because purple was a really hard dye to obtain. It was it was very expensive. It had to come from a particular plant and, yeah, really, really expensive to get. I'm going to pop this on to my base here with um, some Tombow glue, but you can use whatever adhesive you would like. So the only people who could actually afford purple dye and to wear clothes that were made with purple dye were people who were very wealthy or, you know, kings and queens. So um, that is why purple became known as the colour of royalty because only people that could afford it were able to wear it. And I thought that was... See, you didn't know you were going to get a history lesson today, but that's very interesting, and that is the reason why purple is known as the colour of royalty. Right, so this is going to end up here. All right, there's a, little, a few more things I want to add to this to make the card come alive. First of all, I am going to put this on dimensionals, so let's grab a couple of those. And we still need to add some words and other bits and pieces. So let's do that. Um, something I didn't do, but I could have also added this lovely border die. That could would have looked really nice across the bottom, but, you know, maybe next time I'll do that. This is a fun, a fun card. I'm putting it slightly above halfway, so I've got room down the bottom here for my, uh, for my greeting. And I have got um, the word queen. All right, so the word queen can go here. And I've got a piece of a piece of basic white that I'm going to stamp on and I'm wondering should I stick to I'm actually thinking because did you notice in this paper um I've learned something with we have a new color wheel in our new catalog that's upcoming and one of the things they talk about in the color in with the color wheel is um and I've got to say it right so it's like the word analogy, but it's analogous. And analogous means three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And in our color wheel that is shown on page 132 of the new catalog, you will see three colors that are next to each other are Petunia Pop, which is this one, Fresh Freesia, which is this one, and Bubble Bath, which is, well, it's actually pretty in pink. But those three colors are next to each other on the color wheel, which means they go really well. And pretty much this is those three colors, very close to it, okay? So, of course, they're going to look together, good together because they fit next to each other on the color wheel. So I'm thinking I might actually, to pull in one of those colors, I might go to Berry Burst because that is one of the colors that is shown in this paper, even though I didn't choose this one. But I think this will pull this nicely into our our piece here. So I'm going to do it on. I'm going to do it quite close to the edge, so I might not need to cut that edge. We'll see. Oh, did I get it straight enough? All right. So this is a little bit. You can see this color is a bit stronger, but it looks rather good, doesn't it? So let's. And you can cut this with a trimmer if you want to get it really straight. I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to cut it out with my paper snips and I'm just going to sort of cut it all the way around. I'm not going to worry about speeding this bit of the video up because it's not going to take me very long and I'm going to cut that across the bottom here just in line with the letters. All right so this is going to go down the bottom here and I'm going to have it sitting or do I want it here? Deciding whether I want it above and there's also another word in here that says beloved i want to use that one as well so i'm going to pop that here and i'm going to grab a small block to pop pop that on and will i use the same color i think i will i think i'll use berry burst again i could also use my petunia pop but we've got plenty of petunia pop already so i'm going to add this one and we'll do this on this piece and I'm going to cut this one out as well is 
it's always fun watching other people craft. I don't know what it is about watching other people craft, but there's something very um, <laughs> therapeutic almost, mesmerizing about watching people craft. I know I like it, so I hope you like it when you watch me. All right, so we've got a little word here. So I've got the queen. Now, will I go here on this piece and then put the beloved here? Possibly. Would I want it straight or would I want it crooked? That's something I can decide as I go along. That looks rather good. I like it. All right, so I think that's what I want to do. And I think I want to have this, I think I want to have this flat um, below. So let's give that a try. Now, something you could do, I have um, this color, Petunia Pop, has fabulous ribbon that comes with it. I love all the ribbons that they've given us for each of the new ink colors. They are beautiful. They're bordered ribbons, they're called, and absolutely stunning. I would like to put this on, a, on um, dimensionals, but I've made it so small, I don't know. And I want that to be straighter. Let me move that straight. I don't know whether I want this to be... I would like it up on dimensionals, but my dimensionals are probably not small enough. Now, I could use mini dimensionals, of course, but even those, I think I would need to snip them in half. Let me see if I can do it. This might be silly, but I know this is just a little thing I thought would look nice if it was up on something. As you guys can see, I make up a lot of my cards as I go. And I do this on my Friday and Saturday night videos as well. Oh, sorry, it's Friday and Sunday night. I don't even know what day it is, but anyway. I'm glad it's not Saturday night because that would be tonight and I am not ready. <laughs> so I'm going to, there it is. It is up on half a mini dimensional. That's how little it is but it makes it stand out a little bit better. All right, so that's how that's looking. Sort of cute, right? Um, the ribbon that I'm talking about is this one. And I don't know that we need any ribbon on here. We, oh, you could, we could do some ribbon. Okay, here we go. I'm going to open up the ribbon. I always find I need to get a pair of scissors in underneath it just so I can get the plastic off. All right, and I'm going to cut about a 10 centimeter piece and I'm going to fold that in half and I'm thinking I would have it coming out of here. I think that looks good. Let's try that. And probably didn't need to make it as long. Probably could have gone with a shorter piece. And do I want to try and fray it? Yes, I do. But I will wait and see if I need to make it any shorter before I do that. All right, so using glue dots again. Let's put a glue dot on the back of our folded piece. And I'm going to pop that in there. Like so. And then I'm going to cut it shorter. So it's the first time I've used this ribbon. So I had to discover for myself if I wanted to fray it. And I do think it looks rather nice frayed. Right, let's make sure that's in there properly and let's so what I'm doing is I'm pulling I'm using my my um, nail to kind of pull the fibers off the end here so it starts to fray can you see that now what tends to happen with a lot of our ribbons is they hold on to one side so if that happens what you want to do is you want to snip it and we'll snip it across here and sometimes you might need to snip that bit off And you might need to play with it a little bit just to get the fray right. But it does look cute. All right, that looks better. And this other side, do the same thing. And I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. So it's a, it's a little time, bit of a time thing. Like if you don't have time to be mucking around with this, then you leave this out. But if you have the time, it can be a really lovely, lovely way to get a great a great look and if you love lots of like I I can think of particular crafters that I know very well who love to play around with fibers ribbon fibers and I'm sure I'll see them doing some of this all right all right so you can see the ends are frayed all right and I'll do the same thing on the other side so
that's done looking kind of cute but like i said this is optional you do not have to do the ribbons you could do it completely without them i think they would still look really cute all right there is a couple of little things i want to offer um we have a little crown here the soup this is a cute cute little stamp there's a little tiny weenie crown and i'm just going to stamp it in the berry burst on here you can see it here and we shall cut that out with our paper snips it doesn't take very long it's only a little stamp So now where do we put this? We could put it just above her head, which would actually look really nice. You could have it on the side, you know, I could have it on an angle. I think I like it just above her head. So I'm going to use a mini dimensional behind here and pop that just at the top there because she is after all the queen, the queen bee. All right, we're going to need some bling, definitely. Now we have got coming in the new catalog, which by the way comes out first of May. If you uh, if you have one, um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy using it over the next 12 months. But if you don't have one and you're in Australia and you don't have a demonstrator that you're already working with, please reach out because you will hopefully um, hopefully enjoy that catalog very much, having it in your hot little hands. So I'm going to put one on that little blob down there with it. I'm not quite happy with. And then I'm going to use a couple of little, little, this is the Petunia Pop colour. I'm going to add one there and one just up here. And then I'm going to put the whole thing, of course, on the white card base that we folded right at the start. So I'm going to use my Tombow glue. And pop that whole base or the whole card front on the base. And we have, believe it or not, a finished card. What do we think? Do you like it? I part of me wonders what it would have looked like with the darker, the darker coloring of the paper with this, because I think that would have been really nice as well. The two papers would work in combination with each other really, really nicely. Um, this paper, like I said, it's called Unbounded Beauty and it is absolutely beautiful. You can have a bit of a look at it. It features all the end colours. So you've got peach pie in the background of this one and you've got some Calypso Coral on there as well. This is a colour called Summer Splash. Isn't that beautiful? And there's a little bit of the darker Shy Shamrock in there. Pretty in Pink is in here. And we've got nearly all the, I think we have all the colours there. So you've got all of the colours together on that sheet. This one has mostly Pretty in Pink. A little bit of um, berry burst. I can see what to me looks like fresh freesia in there, even though it's not named in on the paper. There's some um, pool party in there as well. Really, really lovely. Aren't these beautiful? This is um, summer splash and shy shamrock again. I'm getting better at saying the words shy shamrock. I found that really difficult at start because it doesn't sit well with my lisp. How nice is this? This is summer splash in the background with petunia pop on it. Isn't that beautiful? And we've got Petunia Pop here. I think these colours are some of the prettiest colours we've had in a lot, long, long time. I mean, I loved last year's colours because I like the slightly moody, grungy kind of a look. And that worked really well for me. But I think that these ones are the prettiest we've had in a very long time. So just gorgeous. And so there they are. So that set is gorgeous because it does feature all of the in colours as well as some great other bits and pieces like stamps and so forth all right that's my card today guys i hope you like it um if you have any questions at all um you can ask in the comments and i will get back to you i read through them as often as i can um 
if you have a moment, please jump down in the description below and check out the next person in this blog hop. Um, so we have a very talented group of people who contribute to this blog hop and uh, sorry, this video hop, I should say. And you can just click on the link of the next person in the hop to see the next one and the next one and so on. So it's a really cool um, setup. I don't know of all that many video. Uh, there's a lot of blog hops around, but not a lot of video hops around. And I think this is pretty, pretty cool having um, this great group of people to work with. So I hope you enjoyed my card today. I hope you'll enjoy our royal theme this month and we'll be back again next month with a new theme. Have a great week, guys. Have a great month. Bye.